Number 11. Sherry Maddox Lifelong Virginia resident Sherry Maddox was kayaking along the Staunton River last year, as she had done many times before. When she felt a bug bite on her upper lip, she went back home and carried on with her day, assuming it wasn't a huge problem. But her symptoms only worsened overnight, so she visited a local emergency room the next day and received antibiotics. The medication did nothing to help, as Sherry's pain worsened to the point where she worried that she was going to die and her upper lip swelled to several times its normal size. Sherry later told local station WFLA that she was even hallucinating, and she had mistakenly believed it was caused by the pain medications doctor gave her at the hospital. She sought further medical care, and a doctor determined that she had been bitten by a brown recluse spider. While it's rare to die from a brown recluse bite, the symptoms are extremely unpleasant. It's one of the most dangerous spiders in the United States and its habitat extends from Nebraska to Ohio and south from Texas to Florida. After receiving proper treatment, the swelling in Sherry's lip went down and she was expected to make a full recovery. Number 10. Karel Mowat One day in 2015, 24-year-old British radio presenter Karel Mowat awoke at her home in Surrey, England with a large blister on her leg. As someone who suffers from a lot of allergies, she wrote it off as a bad reaction to a bite from a house spider and initially refrained from panicking. The blister continued to swell, but because Moat suffers from a phobia of doctors, she tried to self-medicate with antihistamines. She eventually went to her doctor and received antibiotics, but the bite worsened. Moat ended up being rushed to the emergency room, where doctors determined that she had been bitten by a brown recluse spider. Moat underwent months of medical treatment for the bite, which left her with a gaping hole in her leg roughly the size of an American quarter. She regularly visited a dermatologist where she endured extremely painful dressing changes and had to be held down by nurses and her boyfriend while she screamed out in pain. The young woman also suffered from nausea, grogginess, and a weakened immune system. Brown recluse spiders are somewhat common in the United States, especially in the country's southern region. It was odd that Moat got bitten because they are extremely uncommon in Britain. She couldn't fumigate due to her numerous allergies and was left feeling unsafe in her own home. Moat told the Daily Mail that she was determined to overcome her newfound trauma from the bite, which has left her with a lifelong scar, but made her less fearful of doctors and hospitals. Number 9. Russell Davies 55-year-old Russell Davies had just moved into a council flat in Kent, England in 2020, when he began noticing sores all over his body. The problem persisted for 15 months while he tried to figure out what was causing the painful lesions that made him feel like he was being eaten alive. Finally, Davies tore his flat to pieces in search of the culprit and discovered numerous false widow spiders. False widows are considered Britain's most venomous spider species, but they typically inflict a small and relatively harmless bite, making Davies' experience exceptionally unusual. He convinced the Clarion Housing Association to fumigate the building's hallways, but said that the agency refused to pay to fumigate his apartment. A spokesperson for the association said that under the terms of the man's tenancy agreement, it was his responsibility to handle the infestation inside his home. They also mentioned that Davies received advice on how to handle the problem on his own from the pest control specialists who dealt with the building's common spaces. But Davies was left with severe mental anguish and said that he was unable to continue working as a chef due to the painful bites and scars the spiders inflicted all over his body. Because the housing council wouldn't provide him with an exterminator, he felt he had no other choice than to leave the flat and sleep outside in a tent. When news of the ordeal broke recently, Davies said that he had been living in the tent for roughly a week and a half. Number 8. Morgan Curran when British caretaker Morgan Curran noticed that she was suffering from some sort of insect bite in 2019, she initially wrote it off as no big deal, but it became increasingly painful and itchy as the 21-year-old developed a gaping wound on her hand. She took some antihistamines, which failed to alleviate her symptoms. The bite turned black and became extremely swollen, prompting Curran to seek advice from a local pharmacist who recommended going to the emergency room. Curran chose not to seek medical attention because she did not want to have to change her plans to attend a performance that evening. But the bite got so bad that she went to her primary doctor, who sent her straight to the hospital. 
doctors determined that the bite was heavily infected and that Curran might have lost her hand or even died if she had delayed treatment for much longer. She stayed in the hospital for five days, during which time she underwent two operations to remove infected tissue from the wound. Curran was out of work for five weeks after returning from the hospital visit and was left with a perpetual fear of spiders. She told the Daily Mail that even if she spotted a tiny spider, it had to be removed before she could go to sleep, and if she saw a spider in her bedroom but was unable to catch it, she would sleep in another part of her house. While the experience left a permanent scar on her hand, she made a full physical recovery. Number 7. Sam Canizé In late 2017, a teenager Sam Canizé dipped his legs into the water at Dandy Street Beach in Melbourne, Australia's Brighton neighborhood, only to realize shortly thereafter that he was being attacked and that his legs were covered in blood. Canizé's father took his son to the hospital, where initially the staff weren't sure what caused his wounds, but the creatures responsible for the incessant bleeding were ultimately identified as a flesh-eating amphipod and sea flea, commonly known as sea lice. Marine biologist Dr. Jennifer Walker-Smith explained that sea lice don't typically attack humans and chalked Canizé's experience up to an unfortunate coincidence. Amphipods, including the species responsible for Canizé's injuries, are related to shrimps and prawns, but smaller, and while uncomfortable, their bites do not cause lasting damage. At first, the teen thought his legs were being irritated by sand, and he simply attempted to brush them off. Walker Smith, who examined specimens of the creatures responsible for Canizé's bloody injuries, defended the amphipods, stating, If we didn't have them, we'd have a sea full of dead fish and dead birds. It's just part of the food web, the chain of life. Fortunately, Canizé recovered from his injuries, and experts reassured the public that the teen's bizarre encounter with sea lice was a one-off incident and that it was perfectly safe to enter the water. Number 6. Alex Bessler 23-year-old Alex Bessler and his friend were enjoying a morning hike in Arizona's Usury Mountain Park in 2016 when a massive swarm of bees attacked seemingly out of nowhere. Bessler's friend was able to hide in a nearby bathroom, but he nonetheless became a victim of the unprovoked attack and received over a thousand stings. Bystanders tried to help him, but were repeatedly thwarted by the uncharacteristically aggressive insects. The young man was still covered in bees when Maricopa County Sheriff Sergeant Alan Romer managed to load him into an SUV with the help of two firefighters and several park employees. Bessler was pronounced dead at a local hospital. Sergeant Romer later described the ordeal as the worst bee attack he had seen in 16 years of being stationed in the area. It was speculated that Bessler fell victim to the Africanized honey bees, also known as killer bees. They're known for being much more aggressive than typical honeybees. Africanized bees are so named because they are descended from the southern African bees imported by Brazilian scientists in the 1950s. They attack for up to 24 hours after being agitated and may target anyone within a quarter mile of their hive. In the wake of the shocking tragedy, Maricopa County Sheriff Joe Arpaio said that Africanized honeybee attacks were becoming more frequent in the region. He urged the public to remain vigilant and to pay attention to their surroundings. Number 5. Andy Irons In 2010, news headlines reported on the death of iconic surfer Andy Irons, claiming that the three-time world champion had succumbed to dengue fever after contracting the mosquito-borne disease in Puerto Rico. The disease is transmitted by mosquitoes carrying one of four viruses and is common in Southeast Asia, South America, and Sub-Saharan Africa. He was found dead at an airport hotel in Dallas during a layover while traveling back to his home in Hawaii. Irons had dropped out of an event due to concerns that he and other American surfers had contracted dengue fever, leading to the assumption that it was what killed him. CBS News pointed out that dengue fever is practically unheard of in the U.S., even though more than 100 million people suffer from it every year in other parts of the world, and that Irons' death was drawing awareness to its dangers. A medical examiner's report that was released the following year claimed that Irons died from a heart attack caused by the hardening of his coronary arteries. It noted that a variety of drugs had been discovered in Irons' system and listed drug usage as a secondary cause of death. At the request of the late surfer's family, forensic pathologist Dr. Vincent Di Maio reviewed the report and concluded that Irons had therapeutic levels of Xanax and methadone in his system when he died. His remains also tested positive for a chemical found in cocaine. Based on the amount found in his system, it's believed that Irons used cocaine around 30 hours before his death. Number 4. 
Harry Evans. There are at least 32 sea snake species in the warm waters of Queensland, Australia, and the country's Northern Territory. Bites are rare because the snakes rarely come into contact with humans, and while some sea snakes are known to be among Australia's most venomous creatures, they rarely deliver a lethal amount of venom when they do decide to bite someone. Most bites happen on trawlers when nets are being brought in. This is how a 23-year-old British man named Harry Evans met his fate in 2018. When he was bitten by a sea snake, Evans was living out his dream of working on a fishing boat and was pulling up a net when the snake sank its fangs into his flesh. Emergency responders rushed to the man's aid and flew him to the hospital, but he unfortunately died from the bite. Harry's family told the BBC that they were proud of him for scoring his dream job and remembered him for his kindness and his ability to make people laugh and bring a smile to their faces. His death is believed to be the first recorded fatality resulting from a sea snake bite in Australia. Number 3. Greg McChenzie A 64-year-old Michigan man named Greg McChenzie was installing docks at a pond in 2019 when he was bitten by a mosquito. Just days later, he had a seizure and was rushed to the emergency room, where doctors did their best to treat him when he went brain dead. McChenzie passed away, and tests showed that he had contracted a rare mosquito-borne virus called Eastern Equine Encephalitis, or EEE. He was one of seven people throughout Michigan who were infected with EEE that month. It's a shocking statistic in a country that typically sees only 7 to 11 cases per year on average, and it sparked concerns among experts that the virus could represent an emerging medical threat in the northeastern US. EEE causes a wide range of symptoms. For some people, it's no worse than a mild flu, but 20% of sufferers become clinically ill, and around half of those patients develop deadly neuroinvasive diseases, which cause inflammation of the brain. Many who have neuroinvasive diseases pass away, while others suffer lifelong effects, like brain damage. CDC statistics show that 2019 was a particularly bad year for EEE in the US, resulting in 38 diagnoses throughout the country. But there were only 13 cases in 2020, suggesting that perhaps the virus isn't as big of a threat as it seemed like during the bizarre uptick that killed McChenzie. Number 2. Andy Kessler New York City skateboarding legend Andy Kessler was famous not only for his skills, but for building skate parks in New York and his efforts to dissuade youth away from violence. The 48-year-old's life was cut short in 2009 when he died from an allergic reaction to a wasp sting. Kessler was spending the summer near Montauk in Long Island, where he was surfing and helping a friend get off drugs. His untimely death came as a shock to the skateboarding community and to his family, and it served as a sobering reminder of just how dangerous bee and wasp stings can be to severely allergic individuals. And while it's not incredibly common for people to experience allergic reactions to insect bites, an estimated 40 Americans die every year after getting bitten or stung. Prevention is essential for people who are aware of their allergy, and for those who appear to be having an extreme reaction to a bite or sting, experts urge people to abide by the better safe than sorry philosophy and seek help as quickly as possible so that any necessary life-saving drugs can hopefully be administered in time to save the patient's life. Number 1. Evelyn Wooten 77-year-old Evelyn Wooten and her longtime friend Karen Hudgens were walking together on a trail in Danville, Virginia in 2019. When Wooten said that something had bitten her, Hudgens attempted to swat the offending insect away while the ailing senior citizen started turning blue. Her tongue swelled as she started to gasp for air and then collapsed on the ground. Wooten was rushed to the hospital where she died the next day. Hudgens was convinced that her friend had been bitten by a kissing bug. While kissing bugs are known to cause a serious and sometimes deadly condition called Chagas disease in certain parts of the world, there's only one species in that part of Virginia, and their bites are typically harmless. The bug that bit Wooten is Triatoma sanguisuga, known as the kissing bug, because it tends to bite people's faces near the mouth. Agent Stephen Bartz told local station WSET, that it was more likely that Wooten died from a severe allergic reaction to the bug bite. According to the CDC, the saliva in certain types of kissing bugs can cause an extremely rare, deadly allergic reaction, but it remains unclear what type of insect was responsible for the tragedy. Thanks for watching. Would you rather give a public speech with an unflattering but non lethal bug bite on your face, or sprain your ankle during a hiking trip and get stuck hanging out at the campsite?
while the rest of your party gets in touch with nature? Let us know in the comments below.